All sitcom stars have a catchphrase, you know, like dynamite. Right, right. And there's what you talking about, Willis? What you talking about, Willis? What you talking about, Willis? For some reason, the other networks just don't get smart comedy. Say hello to the dopest writers in the business. He says, yo. <laughs> Like she was behind this whole scandal. I'm gonna ask you again. Mr. Vice President. Mr. Vice President. Maybe we'll get you a Mercedes to go along with that BMW. Cops say it would reach its boiling point the very next day. What time do you want the band to start to play? Around three. Looks like it won't be sneaking up on me this time. Don't need to. Fly. Okay. Buffalo. Oh, Buffalo fell. And Kenny just, he said, uh, well, I sure screwed up my life. He walked over to his pickup. Was gone. Shut up, Buffalo. You're okay. Need cash? Call First Potomac Mortgage today. No. Hey, hey, shut up. Who are you? Shut up. Did you get the money from Robert? Oh, yeah. Where is Robert? He's in there. I'm calling the cops. No, you're not. I'm going to kill you. Wait, I'll pay it. What? I'll pay it. Where are you going to get the $40,000? All right, go ahead. You stay there. What? At the Federal Addiction Research Center in Lexington, Kentucky, Dr. Harris Isbell is contracted by the CIA to study the effects of prolonged exposure to LSD. His subjects are incarcerated heroin addicts, mostly African-American. Even Dr. Isbell himself is amazed that such high quantities of narcotic can be tolerated for so long. Doctors would do experiments on drug addicts, giving them hallucinogens, and then as a reward for participation, they would get more drugs of addiction. What do you got for a sergeant? Looks like he's had a pretty good record until recently. He's good at his job. What's his problem? That's it. This time he's getting Article 15. As soon as you get the paperwork done, get him in here. Yes, sir. All right. I don't see any need for pretrial confinement. Fight for a sergeant. Keep an eye on him. Yes, sir. All right, let's get this thing moving. Yes, sir, thank you. Thank you very much. Keep me posted on how it goes. All right, sir, thanks. All right? You have three days to let me know your decision. Do you understand what I've told you? Yes, sir. All right, you're dismissed. Ron Safer explained to his team that all the gangster disciples' activities could be linked as a continuing criminal enterprise. The prosecutor defined conspiracy for the jury as an agreement to do something illegal. He showed the jury, in graphic detail, the Chicago that existed in the world of the gangster disciples. The list that we found, Government Exhibit 1, and then Government Exhibit 2 was a graphic depiction of that. The state rested its case amid a gang-orchestrated campaign of protest and witness intimidation. Prosecutors worried that, despite their efforts, dangerous killers might go free. No more questions, Your Honor. The defense rested. Once I got over my fear that I'd be hauled below decks and manacled to another oarsman, I actually started to enjoy myself. <laughs> well, you know, I suppose I won't be spending that much time in my cabin anyway. Okay, you're right. We're on the voyage of the damn. <laughs>